Hello and welcome to Power Up Your Sub Performance with me, Dr. Audrey Lee. I'm happy that you're here and we've got some fun and tasty things to talk about today. Our topic is Nutrition 101. This is a foundation. This is a fundamental to our future talks. We need a strong foundation to build upon for our sport nutrition. I'm going to focus on the five macronutrients so that it is clear. And then in all future podcasts, you'll know what I'm talking about. And if you have any questions, you can always refer back to this for information. So macronutrients versus micronutrients. The prefix macro means big, right? It means that our human bodies need these nutrients in large amounts to maintain and sustain our health. There's also micronutrients. Those are small nutrients. And we need them in small amounts to maintain and sustain our health. The macronutrients, the five are fiber, water, fat, protein, and carbohydrates, not necessarily in that order. So I'm going to discuss each one of those macronutrients and give you some examples. There's also video so that you can see a little show and tell, because if we're talking about food, I think you need to be able to see it. And when you can join me for a class, workshop, or a retreat, you'll get to taste it. <laughs> so let's begin. The first macronutrient I want to discuss is fiber. Research shows that dietary fiber intake reduces the risk of multiple diseases and illnesses, including diabetes, heart disease, certain cancers. It also helps reduce weight gain, obesity, and other diseases. The more dietary fiber, meaning fiber that you get from your foods, is associated with lower risk of heart disease. The recommendations for women are greater than equal to 25 grams per day. And for men, it's 38 grams or more. Just some information. Fiber is important for our health. However, we as paddlers also know fiber can, I was gonna say detrimental. It can be detrimental to our performance. So there are certain times when you eat fiber. Future podcasts will focus on what to eat when before, during, and after training and competition. Fiber is something that you want to eat when you have plenty of time. So say perhaps you have early morning training, you have something light and simple perhaps before training. After your training, that's when you can have all the fiber that you want. On the other hand, if you have training in the evening, then maybe you have a big fibrous meal for breakfast, oatmeal with lots of fruits and all kinds of other things, okay? I'll get into further discussion about fiber in the future. The next macronutrient is water. Did you know that your body is predominantly water? 60% of the body is water and about 70% of your brain is water. It is essential for our body functions. It helps to regulate body temperature. So I'm sure you've noticed training and competing when you don't have enough water, what happens? We get tired, we get sluggish, we feel heavy. So water, taking in water, drinking your water, and also eating your water is very important. I'll talk about those in future podcasts. Recommendations for water, different recommendations out there, but we're, what I really like is half of your body weight in ounces. So say if you're 150 pounds, and half of that is 75, and that would be 75 ounces. And remember, that's a minimum when you're active and when you're very active. And depending on weather, if it's hot and it's sunny and you're out during the warmest times of the day and you're sweating a lot, you will need more. If you're at altitude, like where I'm at, where I live in the mountains, you're going to need some more. So these recommendations are general recommendations. When you want something specific to you for your body, for your particular particular scenario or training, 
speak with an expert, a sport nutritionist. You can talk with me and we have some others that I will be interviewing on the podcast. Another excellent way to help you gauge your hydration level is the color of your urine, the color of your pee. So think of a scale, apple juice to diluted lemonade. Apple juice, really dark urine is a sign of dehydration. We don't want that. A light color, doesn't need to be clear, but a very light yellow, that's our gold color. This is a good way to gauge, but also remember that the color of your urine is affected by things that you eat. And if you take certain supplements or vitamins, can affect your urine color, okay? Next, moving on to fat, also known as lipids. So fats, nuts and seeds, the importance of fats are, they are needed to transport the fat soluble vitamins. So the vitamins A, D, E, and K can only be transported through the body when they have some fat with them. So you need some fat in your nutrition. Fat is also part of our cell membrane. It's essential, it's part of what we are, our bodies. In addition, fat is a fuel source for our training. It's when we're doing low intensity exercise longer than four hours. Like right now, I'm at rest and I'm burning fat. <laughs> I'm burning exclusively fat right now, okay? So fat is a form of fuel. And one gram of fat is nine calories. Protein. Protein. We all hear all kinds of things about protein. Protein. The function of protein is to build and repair muscle. That's the number one function. Some people think that it is a fuel source. Yes, it is. It can be up to 15% of our fuel source, however, it is not the body's preferred fuel source. The body prefers carbohydrates first and foremost. The body is designed to take in carbohydrates and process them, digest, absorb, and release energy from them with ease. Next would be fat. And finally, protein. And that is if and only if the other two fuel sources have been depleted. So this is really important to emphasize that proteins are less efficient at generating energy, but they are important to build and repair muscles. So examples, I have, I have beans. I haven't gone shopping, so I don't have a lot of different things. Lentils, you get the picture, right? So beans, lentils, nuts and seeds, tofu, and then all of your different animal products. Dairy, low-fat dairy. There's also going to be some other things in there, right? Your meats, your poultries, seafood are also sources of protein. And last but not least, moving on to carbohydrates. So I saved it for last because carbohydrates are where people have the most confusion, there's the most misunderstanding, the most misconceptions. And I wanted to start here right now from the very beginning so that it's clear, clear, crystal clear, carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are the main fuel source for your body. And remember this, carbohydrates are the exclusive fuel source for your brain and your central nervous system. So if any of you are on one of those low carb diets, I'm sure you've experienced headaches, foginess, difficulty concentrating, that's due to lack of carbohydrates. Another example, have you been out paddling for long amounts of time? Maybe you go out and you don't expect to be paddling for a long time. You're going to do a short little paddle in the harbor, and then you meet up with friends. Hey, join us. We're going to paddle out to la 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 la. And you're like, oh, great. I'm having so much fun. And then you hit this point where you're like, oh, you start to feel sluggish, you feel tired, maybe drinking because you didn't pack or plan in advance. 
and you don't have the fuel. So what happens is you get tired, you get fatigued. But where does it start? It starts in your brain before in your body and your muscles because the brain is not getting it. So very, very important. So carbohydrates, there are other classifications of carbohydrates. So what I want to really emphasize here is that carbohydrates are number one fuel source for athletes, especially endurance athletes, paddling athletes. That's you, that's me, right? So learn to love carbohydrates. Yes, I'm telling you, love your carbohydrates. I'm telling you, eat your carbohydrates, drink your carbohydrates. So to dissolve this confusion, let's really focus on the clarity. Carbohydrates, here are different ones. I've got rice, I've got buckwheat, I have noodles, I have potatoes, I have asparagus, I have rainbow shard. I also have some other vegetables. I have carrots, I have squash, I have some bell peppers, I have some tomatoes. I also have fruits. We've got bananas. These are for a smoothie, that's why they're brown. <laughs> Apples, oranges, tangerines. Those are some examples of carbohydrates, right? Oh, and I wanna show you some more things. Some more things, some more things, some more things. Our sport nutrition products, let's not forget those as part of our show and tell, right? So let's break this down even more. So not just carbohydrates. I want you to think of your carbohydrates as three different things, right? Starchy carbohydrates or starches. Those are gonna be your root vegetables, potatoes and sweet potatoes, rice, other grains, quinoa, millet, sorghum, etc. Those are going to be your starches. Then you have your vegetables. Vegetables are clear, yes, yes. And then you have your fruits so that you can clarify even further carbohydrates. When people say, I don't eat carbohydrates, I'm gonna say or ask, well, what are you eating? Because if you're not fueling your body to perform your best, you're not going to perform your best, period. No matter what training you do, no matter what equipment you have, no matter what coach you have, when you don't fuel your body, you can't go. So that being said, carbohydrates, and it's the quantities, right? It's the quantities that you eat that make a difference. Do carbohydrates make you fat? No. When you're training, no. When you're eating the amounts that you need, no. send in your questions for future podcasts because I know there will be questions about this. So other terms, simple and complex carbohydrates. Think about our first macronutrient that I talked about, fiber. Fiber comes from plants, comes from vegetables and fruits only. There is no fiber in protein and there is no fiber in fats. It comes from plants. Right, so I was gonna say nuts and seeds and your beans. Yes, there is fiber and there is some protein. So there's a little bit of overlap of things, but that will be discussed further. Simple, simple are gonna be easy, quickly broken down. So this is a white rice of your grains, but the simplest carbohydrates are your sport nutrition products. This is one of my favorite favorite food brands. First thing. Sugar, dextrose, that's what carbohydrates are. They get broken down to sugars, but sport nutrition products in particular, and that's gonna be the topic for future podcasts. Sport nutrition products are specifically designed for performance. So this is for hydration. This is a hydration drink mix that has calories in there. Calories are energy. So you drink this, you're hydrated, and your energy through the form of carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates that don't need to be broken down. You drink them and you're already absorbing energy from those carbohydrates right in your mouth, right in your mouth. So let's recap on all of this, short and sweet. There are five macronutrients. Macro meaning nutrients that are needed in large amounts to maintain and sustain our health and performance. Fiber comes from 
vegetables, and fruits. Have your fibrous foods three hours before training. And I'm going like this, more or less, right? Give yourself plenty of time, especially if you're not used to eating a lot of fiber. If that's not part of your typical nutrition, you may feel some gastrointestinal movement, <laughs> discomfort. And so you don't want to be taking in high fiber foods close to your training or competition. Water is essential. We are predominantly water. Our bodies are predominantly water. So drink your water, eat your water, about half of your body weight in water. Fats are a fuel source and they're needed for fat-soluble vitamin transport. Protein is needed and necessary to build and repair muscles. However, the most important macronutrient of them all is carbohydrates. And I am breaking down carbohydrates into starch, vegetables, and fruits. And so you need all of these things at certain times in your day to sustain and maintain performance. And not only do we want to maintain our performance, we want to get faster. And so by learning when to time your meals and what you should eat is going to help you enhance your performance. And so that's going to be our next podcast focus. So please send in your questions so that I can be clearer. And I'm going to share some research on all of this. Thank you. Thank you. And have an amazing training session. And I'll see you next time.